processing data for outlier detection. And uh, so this is joint work with Rob Heinemann, Kate smith Myers, and Andres Munoz Acosta. So what I'm going to talk about is in, normali uh, in outlier detection, generally, we normalize data. Because that's, for example, think if we, we've got uh, people's data and then you've got height, weight, and then income in dollars, then it doesn't make sense to find outliers just having height in centimeters, weight in kilograms, and income in you know, dollars. It will be all uh, the money, uh, uh, income-related outliers that you're finding. So you, you have to normalize data. So uh, what's, what's the general thing that's done? And what are the limitations of this approach? And wh what have we done, uh, our analysis, and what, what we've learned from that? So the general overview of what's being done. Uh, traditionally, min-max normalization is the normalization that's been done. So that's what I could find out. If someone has seen some other normalization methods used for outlier detection, please let me know. So mostly min-max is the most um, popular, like in the sense that's what I've seen. And so that is all columns are normalized to zero and one. You, you have a column, it's column by column normalization. So for every column, you minus the minimum, divide by the range, that, that's the transformation. Of course, there are other normalizations that are standardizations that we can consider. We can you know, do mean standard deviation where you uh, minus the mean and divide by the standard deviation or minus the median, divide by the uh, divide by IQR or median MAD, which is uh, you're dividing by the median absolute deviation. Um, so this is apart from min max. So the thing is, min max and mean standard deviation, these techniques are sensitive to outliers. The moment you put in an outlier, your transform data changes, whereas median IQR and median MAD are robust methods. Even if you have outliers, it wouldn't you know, affect so much. Um, so, okay, what's the big problem? Why is it that if we use min-max, you know, is, that, is it bad? No, no, min-max is a decent method. It's, it's, it's a good method. So, but what's the problem in using min-max? The thing is, the performance may suffer if we fix upon min-max as the normalization method for outlier detection all the time. For example, so this is, uh, th this is um, an example uh, that we've done. The LOF is local outlier factor uh, done by Brunig uh, and co-authors uh, this some time ago. This is, a, the, the, this is a popular method in outlier detection. It takes into densities into account and finds outliers in density uh, based on density computations. So the first data set, the, the, this data set is, um, is a variant of the Abilone data set. And in that data set, so these columns have the uh, performance of the outlier detection method. Um, and the performance of the outlier detection method is area under the ROC curve. So we can't have like classification accuracy kind of thing for outlier detection because outliers are so, so rare. You, you'll have 98% anyway if you, if you uh, decide everything is no, a non-outlier, so you need to have another measure. So the measure we have is area under the ROC curve, and so the, the closer to the values are to one, the better it is. Uh, so the first one, so, and the four columns are uh, depending on the normalization method. So if you use mean SD, that's the first column. The second column is median IQR. So uh, the same file if you use different normalizations, but you're using the same outline method. You're, so it's, it's, same, it's, it's LOF for everyone. So, so the difference in uh, performance. Now the first one, it's more or less similar, very similar. But look at the second one. Second one, if you use median MAD, you get 0.9, whereas if you use min max, if you, you get 0.56. And that's a massive difference because all these values are between 0 and 1. Well, you've got to get 0.5 at least, but like, you know, so that's, and this is your, if you just think, if you just do min max alone, you're going to suffer. So, um, so that's what, uh, so, so, so that's why we have to explore this question, what, what are the normalization methods that uh, you know, we can do or we can think of? 
Now, the question is why? Why does normalization affect uh, outlier detection? Because, you know, we think, oh, it's an affine transformation. You minus something, you know, divide by the standard deviation. But why? It shouldn't. No, it does affect. This is, this is why. Because when we do normalization, we do column by column. So each axis is either squashed or stretched. And, so, and, and this changes distances. From method to method, distances from points are relatively changed. So let's say one axis might be squashed after normalization. The other axis is stretched. So previously, if A and B were n nearest neighbors, now A and C might be nearest neighbors, y you know, because things are, the axes change, the distances change. So uh, normalizing cha changes distances, and it changes the nearest neighbor structure because of that. And also it changes densities. It, like, you know, think you've got a unit ball, there's a point, and you squash axes in certain ways, how many points are there in the unit board? That, that number changes, so densities change as well. This is the reason that normalization uh, is important for outlier detection. It's, it's not, well, we think it's not as important for classifying data where you have like 50-50 and you're finding a, a, a classification boundary. That boundary will change when you normalize as well. But this is when you're finding outliers, it, it does make a difference. So to, to give an example, these are two observations. So observation 93, and the, these, the, these values are these 64, 65. So if you do min-max normalization, the nearest neighbor is observation 64 for this. And if you do mean standard deviation, it's 64. But if you do median IQR, it's, it's a different one. And um, for observation 94, for these two, you get 72 as the nearest neighbor. And for the other two, you get 80 as the nearest neighbor. So, so the nearest neighbors change with the normalization. So just to see what's the percentage of, da of your data set where the nearest neighbors change as a result of normalization. So, so we did a small experiment, and that in that experiment, what I'm doing is I'm seeing for this row, if you've got all the numbers the same, or if you've got one different for each data point. So what's the percentage of points which has different ne nearest neighbors because of normalization? And these are the two uh, graphs that we get. So here, everything was uh, uniformly distributed. So the x-axis is the dimension. So I'm increasing the dimension of the data set. And uh, every, each trial is done 100 times or so. And the, uh, so uh, the y-axis is the percentage of where the nearest neighbors have changed because of normalization. So here we can see, as the dimension goes up, the percentage where the nearest neighbors change, 30% of the points have different nearest neighbors. This is in a uniform distribution. So, big, and all because of normalization. And if you put one outlier in there, so the, the, the second graph is uh, with, outlier, with one outlier, you put one outlier in there, and it, it goes up to more than 30%, and this peak is achieved even like a little bit sooner, so uh, previously, yeah. So it goes up to 33. So there is a massive amount of uh, data points where the nearest neighbors change because of normalization. And nearest neighbors matters to outlier detection. So our experiment with real data, we have uh, more than about 12,000 data sets. Uh, and uh, so these data sets come from about 200 source data sets. So it's like, you know, we can, we, we take classification data sets and downsample in different ways and turn categorical attributes to numerical attributes in different ways. So you do this and get about 12,000 variants of these data sets. And we use four normalization methods, 12 outlier detection methods, and as the performance, we get the area under the curve. So we, we're interested in the question, how does normalization affect outlier detection? That's the question. So um, 
just to see what it's like, we did a mixed effects model. So, the, so these are, so perf is performance in the, the area under the curve. And out is the outlier method. And so there were 12 different outlier methods. And norm is the normalization method where, where there, there was four. And source, because you know, we, we expect that given the source, different variants must be kind of similar. You know, th this is what we expect at least. So because of that, we have the source as a random effect. And then we, um, we have these two models. So uh, well, and when we do uh, an analysis of variance, we get that model two is preferred with a p-value of you know, uh, 2.2 to 10 to the power uh, minus 16. And that's telling us that the, the, there's an interaction term there. So the normalization affects outlier, uh, outlier detection methods differently. So that's, that was somewhat, hmm, OK. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's what, what that model uh, showed us. We will come back to that, like in the sense we will talk about the insights of that in a bit. But before that, to talk about normalization, so a little bit of notation. So size sensitivity to normalization. So we, we need to know, okay, what does it mean that a data set is sensitive to normalization? So for that, um, we're saying, okay, <coughs> If you fix your outline detection method, um, the, the difference between the performance in any, you know, in any normalization, the, the maximum minus the minimum performance, if it is greater than psi, we are going to say it's psi sensitive to normalization. So that is, for example, so the second one, this is psi sensitive to normalization with uh, psi uh, being 0.3 or even you know, uh, 0.34. But the first one, it's not actually psi sensitive to normalization with psi equal to 0 0.05. So psi is a measure of the uh, sensitivity. What's the difference that you can get? So this table is a results table with, done with different size. So let me explain uh, the table. So let's focus on psi equals to 0 0.05 column. Right, so this is all done with psi 0 0.05. So that is, for for a given for for a given method, is there a difference between the normalization such that the difference is greater than 0 0.05? So if you look at this number, uh, uh, 2029, that number there. So what we have is that many data sets. So we have 2029 data sets that are sensitive to normalization for all 12 outlier methods. For, so, so we have these 2029 data sets. Every data set is sensitive to normalization with psi equal to 0 0.05 for every outlier method. OK. And we have, uh, uh, so how many data sets? We have over 12,000 data sets. Yes, yes, yeah. So uh, if we get, uh, like, for uh, psi equals to 0.10, we have 468 data sets that are sensitive to all the different methods. On the other hand, look at this side. Uh, 412 data sets, th this is the first row, 412 data sets are not sensitive to normalization. Not for a single method. That's, that's why it's zero there. They're not sensitive to normalization for any method. Those data sets are robust to normalization. So you have the two extremes. There are data sets which are not sensitive to normalization. Regardless which normalization method you use, you're going to get similar results. And then you have data sets depending you know, uh, on the method, on the, uh, you know, uh, for any method, everything. Uh, the, da the data says it's sensitive to normalization. So the, you have the extremes. And everything in, in, in between, they're the in-between. So if you look at this number, 1002, you pick a data set. That data set is exactly sensitive to normalization for one outlier method, not for the other 11. Right? So that's what this means. And similarly, these numbers, that's what they mean. So. So it looks so. So what we what we are seeing here is 
no sensitive to normalization is there's a data set aspect to it, like some data sets are sensitive to normalization, but also there's this other aspect, like some, some methods are more sensitive to normalization because, see, look here, like th this set of data set, the 1002, each data set is sensitive to normalization for only one method. So for the other 11 methods, that data set is not sensitive to normalization. So that is, that is more coming from the method that, that, that sensitive to normalization part. The method is uh, creating, like, you know, it's not creating. Me method is uh, contributing to the uh, uh, sensitive to normalization for the higher up ones. So it's, it's this twofold uh, thing, the data set and the outlier detection method. And if now we are going to zoom into this number, so this is with psi equals to 0.2, how many, um, da so we have uh, 2,330 data sets that are sensitive to, sensitive to normalization just for one method, right? One method means as a, as a pool. So uh, for one, so one data set may be sensitive to normalization for one, another one, different one, but each data set is sensitive to normalization for only one method. Okay, so that's this 2,330. If we look at the breakdown of that, this is what we see. So these are the different outlier methods. We have 12 of them in total, and these are the data sets that contributed to the 2,330. And we see, so, Far stable, this method is contributing to, like, you know, giving 888 data sets that are sensitive to normalization. And for example, KNNW, that is KNN weights, that method, only three data sets are sensitive to normalization. So this is the, the method input. So this is why we had in the uh, random effects model, in the fixed effects model, uh, oh, mixed effects model that we had previously, that the, out, the normalization depends on the outlier detection method. So, so for example, for this, for KNN, it's, you know, it's, it's a different effect. Whereas for fast ABOT, it's, it's a, a, a much bigger effect. You are sensitive to normalization. So, and, and you have these different numbers. So, uh, the takeaway that um, we want to, you know, what, what, what do we take from it? So one thing is normalization is a, is a pre-processing step that we need to think about a bit more. It, it, it's, it's not the case if you just use min-max or because min-max has been predominantly used, we might lose out. So we have to think about it a bit more. It might be, you know, for different, for different data sets, different normalizations might give better performance. So the pre-processing step can be tuned. And also the effect of uh, normalization depends on data sets and the outlier detection methods. Thank you very much. We have time for a couple of questions. Um, what, what's our working definition of an outlier? And also, I feel like the different outlier detection methods would have a different definition of outlier, and therefore different. So how do we? Yeah, 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 so the question is, what's the definition of an outlier and that different methods will have different definitions? Exactly. So, um, uh, so, so the definition of an outlier, because we have used these real data sets, we have taken the, the ground truth labels as the definition of an outlier. So, so for example, uh, you know, we've taken, if you taken the diabetes data set, like lots of people without diabetes and a small percentage of people with diabetes, that's the class label is treated as the outlier for this method. And, and one of the reasons that uh, these, uh, y you know, the, these differences come in is that each method is they have their own uh, definition of the outlier which they are trying to capture with their formula. So uh, therefore, uh, some methods are better suited for some, um, some example, uh, for some data sets. But that's the definition we have used for this work. Yeah. 
Okay, so the question is, uh, can I say in high dimensional data, like you know, data sets, how do you do the arc light detection method? Is it column by column or, or the, like, you know, how did I choose that? So for this one, we just took the full data set and fed it to the arc light detection method. We didn't do column by column, but there is a, there, there is a, a section of research where you do, you find subspaces where the outliers shine more. That is that is uh, that, that is uh, a, a research uh, part, like in, in the sense that is a research question that we are we, we are not answering that, but that is a you know field of research that people are doing as well. Okay, thank you.